There was this family, the Stinkaroos. They got that nickname from their shoes. They weren't too fond of soap or water. Not mother, father, son or daughter. They had the most disgusting habits. It could have ended rather tragic. If it weren't for a most peculiar day when they learned the error of their ways. Now strange to tell, they were not poor, but they ate their dinner off the floor. Their cutlery was made of gold, but they never tied it, so I'm told. They made the most disgusting mess, and sometimes didn't bother to dress. The mother of the Stinkaroos, her favourite programme was the news, and as it's on all day or night, she soon became an awful sight, eating Mars bars by the dozen, and sharing pizza with her first cousin. She didn't think to use a bin, the rubbish kept on piling in. The father of the filthy clan, he was a most energetic man, and he woke up on one fine day and decided, as it's almost May, we all should have a holiday, and our filthy habits will go away. Then he made a hanky for his head, and sandwiches for mouldy bread. Daughter Stinkaroo, called Ruth, was quite a nice girl, tell the truth. Very sensibly, she packed a brolly in her old mother's shopping trolley. She even packed her bright red wellies, though truth to tell, they were rather smelly. She cleaned her teeth, she brushed her hair, she even wore clean underwear. The little boy's name was Tim. His face and hands, they were quite grim. His teeth were green, his hair was mad. The state of his socks would have made you sad. But it wasn't his fault, the poor child. He'd been left just running wild. But he was determined to enjoy his day and all the mucky games they play. So there they go, the stinkaroos, away from house and home and news, away from sweets and crisps and mess. The mother wore her best distress. The father beamed, the children smiled. The summer's day was dry and mild. The River Thames was looking swell, and no one, so far, seemed to smell. Now, the day of the family Stinkaroo holiday was due to go down in history, as as soon as they stepped off the train and began walking down to the water, they started throwing rubbish around. They'd throw their empty crisp packets and empty pigs and boxes and sweet wrappers and lolly wrappers and everything into the river. Everything that they found at the bottom of their pockets, TV guides, they didn't give it a single thought. Home time, said Father Stinkaroo. If we hurry up, we'll make it in time to watch Britain's Got Talent. Oh no, you don't! You great big horrible messy pups! I've been watching you all day, and you haven't got any manners at all to speak of. I've got someone that's going to teach you a lesson. get tough, make them and make amends, throwing their rubbish on their river friends, oh we don't want your rubbish man, here no more, don't want your rubbish at our door, we just want to live quiet and nice, besides we've heard that rubbish, it attracts mice, so change your ways, what do you say, what do you say, what do you say? Now Father Stinkaroo fell to his knees and he said, I'm terribly sorry we've upset you and we'll do anything we can to make it up. I, I really hope that we can help you tidy up and that we can all be friends. Well, said the ten little man, man if you really want to make amends, we'd consider you as friends. If you can just see your way to helping us clear up every day especially on Sundays when there's a lot of tourists down here the day trippers and everyone's around throwing their rubbish around and there's a great big mess what do you say? 
And Father Stinkaroo said, Of course, I'll do whatever you say, of course. We'll help you tidy, and then we can all be friends, can't we? That would be lovely, thank you. And that's what happened. Every Sunday, the Stinkaroo family came down to the river and they helped the ten little mermen and the sea witch clean up. And in return, they got a lovely big fish finger and seaweed sandwich. And everybody lived happily ever after.